Today we'll be talking about some of random variables and also the moment generating function. Okay. So here we have a random variable x that follow a normal distribution with mu and sigma square. And suppose we are interested to find the probability that absolute value of x bar less or equal than c. We're trying to find the probability of this event happening. So uh, first of all, we are going to find our, or to evaluate the distribution of x bar, where x bar is denoted by 1 over n to the summation xi. So the expectation of x bar, which is the expectation 1 over n sum of xi, and 1 over n is a constant, uh, so we can move that one outside the expectation. And uh, also here we have the independent assumption here for all the x variable. So expectation of sum of xi will be the sum of the expectation of individual xi. So eventually we will have 1 over n and then n copy of expectation of x, uh, xi. So n copy of mu, which is the, uh, here. The expectation of xi is uh, equal to mu. So eventually we have the expectation of x bar equal to mu, which is also the same as the individual uh, random variable, the mean of the individual variable here. And for variance of x bar, we have that variance of 1 over n sum of xi. And 1 over n is the constant again, so we move it outside to the variance, but we have to take the square, so it's 1 over n square here. And uh, again, because of the independent assumption, we have a variance of sum is the sum of the individual variance. So finally, we have 1 over n squared times n copy of individual variance, so n times sigma squared, which is uh, come from this uh, normal distribution here. And then eventually, we have the variance of x bar equal to sigma squared over n. So now we have the distribution of x bar with uh, mu and the variance sigma square over n. So now we can come back to this problem here. So the probability of uh, absolute value of x bar less than less or equal than c will be equal to x bar greater or equal to negative c or less than or equal to c. And then we can, since we know the mean and the variance of x bar, we can uh, apply the procedure here, x bar minus mean over standard deviation. So we basically transfer this into a variable that follows a standard normal distribution. And then we can apply the same procedure on the left hand side and on the right hand side. So minus the mean over standard deviation, minus means over standard deviation. And now we have, uh, 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 we have transferred the original problem to another problem where our uh, random variable here follow a standard normal distribution here. And then if we, you, if we know the, the specific value for mu and sigma, we can also know the specific uh, value for the distribution of this one here. And then we can just plug in the number and then we can find eventually using the no standard normal uh, CDF and then we can find evaluate the probability of this one here. But the idea is that because of the independent assumption and then we can find the, the mean and the variance for the x bar and then eventually rewrite the original problem into another problem whose uh, random variable follow a standard normal distribution. Okay. Okay. Then uh, for uh, more... Um, uh, general cases, and then here I also given uh, a more uh, using a distri uh, discrete discrete distribution uh, for a discrete random variable. So the mean will be uh, expectation of x, and then here is the summation of the outcome multiplied by its probability. If x is a continuous variable, then we can use the integral and then over uh, integrate over the support of x. But here we have a discrete random variable, so we just are uh, using the summation. And then the definition of expectation is outcome multiplied by its probability. So it's sum over x, the support of, uh, of your random variable, outcome multiplied by its probability. That's the definition of, uh, of, your, of expectation here. And uh, in a general case, we, can, we also want to find the variance. So basically, it's uh, uh, extending the procedure here. So for the variance of x, which we denote variance of x, is also equal to the expectation of x squared minus the square of expectation. So in our case here, uh, the definition of expectation is 
is uh, x min, uh, multiplied by its probability. But expectation of x squared is that we take the square for the outcome and then multiply by its uh, probability. So that will be the definition of expectation and then for a function of x, which is x squared. So this will give us the e of x squared. And then we can minus the square of ex, which is what we get from in here. So minus that, and this will give us the variance of x. And now suppose we have a ver random variable x, s, which is denoted by the sum of n copies of uh, individual x. So here we have that uh, s is approximately follow a normal distribution with mu of uh, variable x is equal to n, n copy of mu x and then uh, sigma square. The variance of, uh, of s is also uh, equal to n times the sigma of the original um, uh, variance of individual copy of that. Uh, here we are, uh, we, this is the sum of n copy of random variable. And here we are taking the average. So here we have our one over n and then one over n square. But uh, if we are just working on the, on this, on the, on the sum, uh, and then each of them has a uh, independent assumption for each of the random variable. And now we can just, uh, um, uh, the, the mean and the variance will be just uh, unmultiplied by its original uh, mean and the sigma of the, or of the individual random variable. And note that we have this approximate here because uh, we don't know the specific uh, uh, distribution of the original variable x. So, uh, so here we can only write that it is as approximately follow a normal distribution with this mu and variance here. And uh, this approximation is only valid when n is a very large number. So, or, or you can say as n goes to infinity, and then it will approximately normal. So here we know that uh, when we already given that x is full of normal distribution, so uh, even for the sum or, or even taking the uh, uh, over the n, taking the average, will, will also be a normal distribution. But in a more general case, we don't know if we don't know the distribution of that. And as n is a very large number, then the sum or the average will approximately follow a normal distribution. And then we can apply the same procedure to calculate the expectation and the variance of that, and then find the uh, distribution, approximate distribution for the s. And also, as uh, yeah, as n goes to infinity, we can use this s minus its mean, and then over the standard deviation, and then again, it will follow a standard normal distribution here. Basically, it's also uh, another kind of like uh, extension of uh, this part here. So this one is also reduced to the uh, standard normal distribution from uh, this normal distribution here. So again, as n goes to infinity, uh, if this one approximately normal distribution uh, minus the mean over the standard deviation equivalent to standard normal distribution here. So uh, these two problems are referring to the average of, uh, of a sum of a random variable. And this one is just direct sum for, of the random variable here. So that we, can, we know that uh, um, uh, the, uh, trying to find the probability uh, distribution of uh, the sum or the average. And now we are going to talk about the moment generating function. And then it is also uh, in terms of, say, sum of a random variable here. Okay. So the question here is that what is the distribution of variable x, uh, s, where s is, uh, say, uh, sum of three uh, random variable x, where x follow uh, exponential distribution, and given that the expectation of x is equal to 100. So now we have a more specific number here for the expectation of individual uh, uh, x, but we are interested in the distribution of this sum here. Okay. So uh, here we are going to apply a moment generating function to calculate or to find out what's the distribution of s. So the moment generating function of s is given here is the definition. So it's the expectation of e to the power of t uh, s. So that's the definition of uh, MGF. And then because of we have the independent assumption, so that we can further break down the variable s into the product of three uh, moment generating function with respect to the variable x. 
So we have uh, e of the t uh, e of the t x one times uh, that. So each of them is a moment generated function of individual variable here. So we rewrite the uh, the moment generated function of the sum to the product of the individual moment generated function. And now we are going to work on the individual one. So let uh, x be the random variable that follow uh, exponential distribution. So uh, then we are going to calculate the expectation of e to the tx. And then by the definition of the expectation, we have this function e, uh, of uh, x, so e of tx multiplied by its uh, density function here. So for our exponential distribution, we have the density is equal to the lambda e to the negative lambda x. And then uh, rearrange the term and then also combine the, the two exponential term. We have this lambda outside the integral since it's nothing to do with the x and then e to the lambda minus t multiplied by x here. And now we are going to evaluate this integral here. So let u be the power of uh, the, uh, the terms in the exponential term. So let u equal to lambda minus t over x, uh, multiplied by x. Then x uh, will be 1 over lambda minus t uh, multiplied by u. So we divided that uh, to the, uh, on the left hand side. And then a small change in x, so dx is also a small change in d, uh, u, so du, and then multiply by this constant term. So now we work on this integral here. So uh, here, that we have the support of x, the support of the exponential distribution is from 0 to infinity. And then uh, e of that, we rewrite the power as to u, so we have e to the negative u. And then dx, we have our uh, expression here. Uh, so it's 1 over lambda minus t times du. So now we evaluate this uh, integral here. This one is a constant, so we can move it outside here. And then e of the negative e, u will be negative e to the negative e, uh, u. So evaluate that, we will have the integral of uh, this, this part here equal to 1 over lambda minus t. And don't forget we have uh, extra lambda here so that the moment generating function of a random variable x is equal to lambda over lambda minus t. And uh, yeah, this is the MGF of uh, exponential distribution. And uh, we also have uh, extra information here. So e of x is equal to 100. So we also know that the expectation of uh, exponential distribution is 1 over lambda. So 1 over lambda equal to 100, so lambda is 0.01. And uh, all uh, the moment generating function and the expectation or the lambda is uh, similar for x2 and x3. So now we are going to combine everything that we have so far, uh, and then uh, uh, and then we are going to work on uh, to get the moment generating function of variable s. So s will be the product of individual moment generating function of x, so that we have this lambda over lambda minus t to the power of uh, three will be the final moment generating function of variable of s. And uh, we also note that the MGF of a random variable x that follow a gamma distribution looks like this. And then we can find that it's very similar to what we have in our question here. So that we can say that our random variable s follow, also follow a gamma distribution with alpha equal to 3 and lambda equal to 0.01. So this will be our uh, the distribution that our random variable s follow. So uh, just uh, a more uh, uh, additional um, detail here is that um, the exponential distribution is actually a special case of a gamma distribution where uh, alpha equal to 1. So we know that the sum of uh, independent random variables that follow a gamma distribution also follow a gamma distribution. Also, we are given that as, uh, x is followed exponential distribution, but it is a special case of a gamma. So sum of gamma is also e follow a gamma distribution. So basically, that is what we have proved uh, uh, here. And then, uh, yeah, so sum of gamma will also follow a gamma distribution. So uh, we have used a moment generating function, uh, another approach to find uh, the sum of a random variable uh, for uh, the distribution of a sum of random variable. Yeah.
Okay, yeah. So again, uh, this is a uh, sum of random variables, except that we have uh, z is equal to 2x and then 4y, where x is follow a gamma distribution with alpha 2, lambda 2, and y is a gamma distribution with alpha 2 and lambda 4. So now we are trying to find the MGF of uh, this new variable uh, z here. Again, it's the sum of random variable. But we are, again, using different approach to find the distribution of, of a random variable z. So uh, again, definition of moment generating function of z. Uh, property of the exponential terms is that z uh, exp of a plus b is e of a times e of b. So that's the property of exponential. And then because of the independent assumption, so x and y are independent. Each of them are also independent. So uh, we have this one can be further reduced to a uh, moment generating function of uh, 2x and then moment generating function of 4y. And now we are going to evaluate individual uh, 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 these two individually. So first, let's work on x. So x follow a gamma distribution. So uh, and then by the definition of the expectation, the moment generated function will be like that. So this is the integral that we are going to evaluate to get uh, this part here. So uh, this thing here, uh, this uh, lambda to the alpha over the uh, gamma function here has nothing to do with x, so we can move it outside the integral. And now we are going to work on this part here. So let, again, we are going to do the substitution to evaluate that to ease the computation. So let u equal to lambda minus 2t multiplied by x. Then x is 1 over lambda minus 2t multiplied by u, division on the left-hand side. Small change in x, small change in u multiplied by its uh, fraction here. Now we are going to work on this integral here. So we have the support on x and then with respect to dx. Now we are going to change it, the support to u. So uh, x equal to 0, this one will also give u equal to 0. x approaching uh, infinity will also give us u approaching infinity. Support of u we have here. And then uh, x to alpha minus 1, we have that one here. So bring this fraction here, so x to the alpha minus 1 e to that is e to the negative u. dx will be 1 over lambda minus 2t du. So eventually we have rewrite everything from u, the support of, uh, from, uh, support of x with respect to x to support of u with respect to u. We rewrite our integral into another, uh, with respect to another variable here. And uh, we are going to combine um, uh, uh, rearrange the term here. So we first move this u outside the parentheses, so u of alpha minus 1. And then this 1 over lambda minus 2t will cancel out with this negative 1 here. So we have this uh, 1 over lambda minus t to the power of alpha only. And uh, here, don't forget we also have this uh, constant term here, so I'll just bring it to here. So this is a constant from here, and then this is a constant from the integral inside. And now we are left with uh, u to the power of alpha minus 1, e to the negative u, and then uh, this integral here. And this integral here has a definition. Basically, it's the gamma function here. So we rewrite that as a gamma function, gamma alpha. And fortunately, we have this one here in the denominator. So everything is canceled out, and that will bring this lambda inside the parentheses which they share the same power here. So it's lambda over lambda minus 2t to the power of alpha. So that will be our final answer for the uh, moment generating function of 2x, which is also this part here. And that's our final answer. Because we know the specific value for alpha and lambda, so we bring in the number, and then that will be our final answer. And a uh, similar idea for gamma uh, distribution of variable y, and then uh, get, we will get that as a MGF, and then plug in the number, that will be our final solution. So, uh, oh, uh, and, and then we bring this one here, and then multiply by that, that will give us the MGF for random variable z. And again, we note the similarity 
of uh, this one to the moment generating function of a gamma distribution here. So we know that our z also follow a gamma distribution with alpha equal to 4 and lambda equal to 1. So here, the uh, again, the property or the rules that we apply is that, uh, well, if, uh, if a random variable has a uh, MGF that is similar to the MGF of a known distribution, then we know that this specific random variable is also following the uh, of our known distribution. So, so again, we this one look like the gamma, the MGF of a gamma distribution. So we know that Z follow a gamma distribution. So that's the basic idea or or the rule that we apply here. So uh, yeah, to conclude, uh, we are talking about the sum of random variables here. So we uh, have some, uh, if we know uh, some information, then we are able to find the sum or the average of a random variable here. And uh, here, we, in the more general case, uh, like when n equal to inf uh, approaching infinity, we, we can do some uh, um, operation on the, on, the, on the sum, and that, that will give us a, a, a normal distribution. So basic, the, the basic idea is the central limit theorem here. And then uh, we can also use the moment generating function to find the rent, to find the distribution of uh, of uh, of a sum. So uh, here are the two examples here. So uh, given the individual distribution of random uh, of individual random variable, and now it, uh, uh, finally we can find out that uh, that the sum uh, follow a, a, a more uh, uh, explicit or a known uh, distribution here. Okay. So uh, yep. Thank you very much.